I'm Aurora, and I'm in the beautiful city of New York, and I play Eliza Doolittle in the smash hit musical, My Fair Lady. One enormous chair I wouldn't it be lovely. Described as the greatest musical of all time, My Fair Lady's premiere here on Broadway almost 60 years ago in this theater where it played and closed was a smash hit. And my friends and I are excited to be bringing My Fair Lady to you in Singapore. familiar with the wonderful story of My Fair Lady, especially because of the multi-academy award-winning film starring Audrey Hepburn. But maybe we can refresh your memory a little bit. The story of My Fair Lady is Cinderella. A girl from the streets becomes a lady. A timeless story started over 2,000 years ago, goes back to the Greeks and the, you know, the myth of Pygmalion, a sculptor who sculpts a beautiful figure of his ideal woman, and he works with such passion and, and so hard that he actually falls in love with the statue, and then the goddess of love brings it to life. So um, this has inspired so many paintings and operas and sculptures, and of course, George Bernard Shaw's um, play Pygmalion on which My Fair Lady is based. The interesting thing about the history of My Fair Lady is that although it's based on a classic British play by George Bernard Shaw, it was written by Americans, Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe. It started in New York City on Broadway. It starred the very young, unknown Julie Andrews. And of course, eventually, it became a Hollywood musical starring Audrey Hepburn. It's a story of someone from a rough lower class world discovering a chance to become a part of a, a world of beauty and grace and elegance. It's about a young girl who strives for more and sees an opportunity in front of her and takes it. And then it's that journey of maybe or maybe not it turning out to be exactly what she thought it would be. Ah, uh, but it's more than that. It's really the story of a lady from the street who teaches a very rude, out of control gentleman how to live life. By George, she's got it. By George, she's got it. Now, once again, where does it rain? On the plain, on the plain. And where's that soggy plain? In Spain, in Spain. I think people should watch My Fair Lady because of the huge amount of themes that are expressed in the show. That there's literally something for everyone. Everyone takes away something a little bit different. So either whether you attach to this sort of Cinderella story or the classism between only by just you know, the same language, but just because of the way you say the words, you're in a completely different class. One of the big major themes is the middle class versus the, the lower class versus the upper class. So it's, it's class struggle, one class trying to move to the other and, and trying to move uh, further away or into. What Alfred P. Doolittle talks about is the middle class morality. Gentle sex was made for men to marry. But with a little bit of luck, with a little bit of luck, you can have it all and not get hooked. He doesn't want to move to the middle class. He's very happy being in the lower middle class, in the, the undeserving poor, which is even lower than the deserving poor. <laughs> and he's, he's very happy to be there and not move up because that brings more responsibility. And then of course Eliza and Professor Higgins, they're trying to bring her into the, into the higher class. With a little bit, with a little bit, with a little bit of blooming luck. At the heart of this musical, of course, are the characters that bring it to life and the special relationships that they have with each other. The relationship between Eliza and Professor Higgins, um, they are at war most of the time. It's a tug of war. Oil and vinegar, scissors and rocks, 
two people who were put in the same room and we want to be there to watch what happens. Their relationship grows, it's challenging, it's, it's up and down, it's hilarious, it's moving, it's dramatic, it captures so many of the fundamental and fascinating aspects of human behavior, which is why the story is so wonderful and why it lasts, why it endures, and why you can produce it today and you can produce it in a hundred years and it'll still have a lot of impact. You could spend weeks, months just examining the dynamic between those two characters, which makes it such a compelling piece of theater. Dum, 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 dum. I've grown accustomed to her face. Henry Higgins. You want to know about Henry Higgins? He's a bully. He's a bully in a she china shop who comes across page. Eliza Doolittle and doesn't know quite what to do with her. He is selfish, rude, pig-headed, arrogant, loud-mouthed. Uh, I have the line, whenever my friends meet him, I never see them again. He's kind of like a big kid. Big baby, as his mother always tells him. But I love him. It's set in 1912. There's a class system in place there, and I'm Higgins, you're Eliza, we're not the same, okay? But the, but, the, but the play goes to great lengths to show that there's a lot of ways we are the same. It's a product of the attitudes of that day, and that's why we tell these kinds of stories, so that you can see how we can learn from behaviors that may not be the most conducive to the happiness, the overall happiness of the human condition. I was serenely independent and content before we met. Surely I can always be that way again. And yet, I've grown accustomed to her looks, accustomed to her voice, accustomed to her face. Right now, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to discuss the character who's at the center of it all, me. Let me love you. 